Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how Microsoft finally, after years, decided to fix the atrocious thing that is solution files or .sln. Some years ago with .NET Core, Microsoft finally fixed csproj files which were terrible in their own right, but in my opinion solution files were even worse, but finally they are fixing them. And the fix is so good, the new solution looks so so crisp, so in this video I'm going to show you what the problem was and how Microsoft is deciding to fix it. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a solution here open, it's just a bunch of example projects, we have Blazor app, a console app, and then tests or test-like projects for each of those applications. And I want to point out that this is currently in version 17.10 preview 3. So if you want to try this feature out, you have to download the preview. So I have the solution here. And what you might be familiar with is this form of csproj file. You have this very neat, very tight, very compact XML file that contains all the information that .NET needs to know what this project is and how it's supposed to work. So in this case, we have like a web project and here we have uh, an executable console application. Very, very nice. Now, back in the day, this used to be way, way longer. And the more dependencies you had, the longer the file was and it was very hard to write tooling and things around it. But that was nothing compared to how bad the solution file is. Let's take a look at the solution file for this solution. So I have my solution file over here. I'm going to just put it in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, it is a lot. Not only is it a, a real mess, but as you can see, the more projects you have, the more solution folders you have, the more everything you have, this gets way, way more convoluted. For example, here I have these solution uh, folders, the source and the test folder, which separate my two types of projects. And then I have my console app, have my tests, but they all get attributed a GUID and then if I want to manipulate anything about these specific things I have to use a GUID but then each project then has also its own GUID so you have uh, active config and this GUID and then debug any release and like what does this even mean how does this make any sense you have the project pre-solution post-solution what does this even mean it is very hard to work with you want to exclude the project using the solution file god knows what you're gonna do imagine you have to do this for some reason somewhere where you don't have an id to use where you can just go right click delete or right click and load or exclude what are you doing you have to search for guids you have to go all the way down here get the guid of each project so these are type guids and these are uh, folder type guids and then if i want to remove this console app i have to go here get this guid copy it then find all the configuration related to this go ahead and delete that and then go ahead and delete that and then go ahead and delete that but then Okay, fine, that will work if I save and I go back to Visual Studio, as you're going to see, uh, the project doesn't exist and I have to reload everything, but once I do, the project is gone. But it's like a guessing game. What are you deleting and how can you even write tooling for this type of format? What is this format? Well, it is nothing. It's just a proprietary mess that Microsoft built and we kind of have to deal with it. So how is Microsoft fixing this mess? Well, I'm going to show you how Microsoft is fixing it, and it's a very, very nice and neat approach. But before I do that, I want to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero, link in .NET. And until the 21st of April, you can get it for free. By making any other purchase on Dome Train, you're going to automatically get that course to show up in your account. That course is authored by Hannes Lauet, who made the anti-framework course, and in my opinion, it goes great with that course because Anti Framework is using a link to translate it into SQL queries. So if I was to buy one course alongside it, I would get Anti Framework Core, but it's completely up to you. Link in the description. So what did Microsoft do? Well, let me show you. Let me just quickly reload this. And now you want to go to Tools and then Options. So you have to enable this feature. It's still in preview. So feedback is so, so important. Please use it and provide feedback. And I'm going to go to Environment. And you can go under Preview Features, and if you scroll a bit down, uh, you should be able to find over here, let's see, Use Solution File Persistence Model. So we're going to click that, we're going to say OK, and once we do that, we're going to click on the solution and say File, Save Solution As, or Save the Name of the Solution As. And then here, you want to click on that and select XML Solution File. That is the new 
format. So we're gonna go ahead, click that, say save, and as you're going to see here, I have a new file generated. Let's see how that looks. Here we go. That's all there is to it. You have a folder, top level, because in this case I have folders. If you didn't have folders, this would all be at top level, so you'd have something like this. Uh, but in this case, I do have folders. So we have the folder, the name of the folder, the path of the folder, and then project path, point to the csproj file, and then the other folder, and then point to the csproj file, and that's it. It couldn't be simpler, it couldn't be easier. It makes you think, why did they go with that convoluted solution file in the first place? And now that we have that, I can go back to Visual Studio. I can say close this solution and then I can say open project or solution. You will see that actually there is no option currently to just select it from here. It doesn't show up as a valid project type. However, what I can do is I can go here, drag and drop it into Visual Studio and this will load it. So I think they just haven't updated yet the picker of the project. Eventually that will be coming. And as you can see, it is all here for you to use. Very, very nice. Very, very neat. I think this compared to this is just a massive, massive upgrade. And the way we'll be able to just write this manually if we need to or write tooling for them will significantly simplify our developer flow. But again, this is still in preview. Microsoft does need your feedback. So please download it, give it a go, we'll see what you think and provide as much feedback as you can. Do you think something else should be here? Let them know and they will evaluate it and potentially add it. This is a great chance and I can't wait for all the IDs to eventually support it. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And did you ever have to write tooling for something like this? How did you do it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.